everyone. Welcome to the first episode of Bolka, where we talk about the ups and downs of love as an Asian American. Uh, my name is Felicia Jong. I'm the creator and host. I'm currently enrolled at UNLV as a fourth year pre-med student, and I am Chinese Indonesian. Um, I'll just say that now because I will mention it a lot throughout the podcast, but enough about me. Today, I'm joined by a friend of mine. Please introduce yourself. Oh, what's up, guys? My name is uh, Robert LePak. Um, also a UNLV student here, a uh, third year n- nursing student. And uh, yeah, it's great to great to be here, Felicia. Thanks for having me on this podcast. Yeah, of course. Um, now, what is your nationality? Oh, of course. <laughs> I am I am Filipino. Uh, both of my parents are Filipino, born in, in the Philippines, but uh, I was born here. So Nice. Yeah. Do you, do you speak Tagalog? <laughs> uh, no, uh, I, I do not speak Tagalog, um, nor do I under nor do I understand, but uh, that's kind of my parents uh, doing. Oh, okay. Have you tried speaking it, or did you want to learn? Um, I, I do want to learn, yeah. Um, it's kind of, I have this, like, little, like, goal in my head. Um, before before I get married, I do want to learn uh, Tagalog because uh, my girlfriend is also Filipino, and so I kind of, like, um, I do want to, like, be able to, like, learn and speak that way I can, like, talk to her family. But, I mean, it's, it'll also be good learning another language because, um, you know, family's a big part of our culture. And so just being able to speak with all my all my family, all my relatives um, would be very useful. Mm-hmm. Also, a lot a lot of nurses, a lot of nurses are Filipino. So mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's good to be able to speak it. But, yeah, currently mm-hmm. I don't. Um, I did try. I do have, um, I do have, like, Tagalog, like, apps to learn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, I, I don't, yeah. Okay, um, have you ever visited the Philippines? Um, uh, a long time ago, um, when I was, like, three years old, but, um, I really do want to go visit, um, I think it's a plan, uh, after, um, after I graduate to go visit the Philippines, because, uh, my mom's side of the family, uh, she's from Bampanga, so, uh, we're gonna go visit there and see all my cousins that are there. Ooh. Okay, it's exciting. Yeah, it is very exciting, yeah. Do you have like an itinerary planned, or is it just like whatever? <laughs> um, I think I think it is whatever. Um, definitely, definitely the food. Pampang is known for like having like really good food over there. So I think we're gonna definitely eat a lot over there. Um, just go for, like sightseeing. Um, a lot of people that I talk to who've like gone to the Philippines, they say island hopping is really fun. Mm-hmm. So we're probably gonna do that as well. Yeah. Nice. It's it's exciting. It is exciting. <laughs> I know. I feel I do feel um I do feel like whitewashed in a sense that I don't know Tagalog. Um I uh uh you know, I haven't been to the Philippines in a while, but um I know it's I think it's exciting to learn about more about my culture and my family. Mm-hmm. Well. Well I'm happy for you. I'm glad you can go back. Yeah, thanks. Um, just, yeah. What about yourself? <laughs> Where are you from? <laughs> Uh, I was born in Ohio, but I grew up here. Ohio? <laughs> 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 really? <laughs> yes. Interesting. <laughs> Why Ohio? I don't know. You can ask my parents. What are your parents doing in Ohio? I have no idea. <laughs> That's where they met, though. So. In Ohio? Were mm-hmm. they born here? Uh, they were born in Indonesia. But so. they met in Ohio. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right on. Do you speak Indonesian? I do. Yeah? Yeah. Can you say uh, say a few lines? No, I don't want to. You don't want to? <laughs> uh, okay. How, how how about hello? Hello. It's really the, the same thing. Same thing as? Hello. <laughs> oh, hello in Indonesian? Really? Yeah. Did uh, did we take that? Or not we. <laughs> Is it like English? <laughs> <laughs> anyways. Anyways. That's cool that, that you speak Indonesian. Um. <laughs> Yeah, that's really cool. Thank you. <laughs> um, what is your favorite Filipino dish of all time? Of all time? Um, favorite dish of all time. Um, it's this dish. It's called uh, sinigang. Mm-hmm. Um, pork sinigang especially is my favorite. Um, I don't know how to describe it. It's like a soup, soup based. Um, has pork in it. Um. Let's see. It's sour. It has a sour taste to it. 
Um, that's why I kind of like it because I kind of like sour foods. Mm. So um, yeah, it just hits the spot, especially like like after a long day, you just want something something warm to eat. Um, that's really good. Um, my mom makes really good lumpia because mm-hmm. my mom's Pampangan, so she d- she does make really good food. Mm-hmm. So I really like lumpia. Hers is good. Um, chicken adobo that's that's also good as well yeah um yeah i think those are those are probably like my top three dishes okay uh, they're, they're, they're very home-like i feel like it's very like nostalgic to me and so nice. i get it whenever i can yeah. yeah sticking with the classics i see with the classics of yeah. course yeah <laughs> i feel like those are very common <laughs> mm-hmm. filipino dishes but did you know i also found this out recently um what is it um, I think, especially, I think Sinigang originated from Pampanga. I don't know, you might need to do a fact check on that, but. I mean, I believe you. You believe me? Yeah. I don't believe myself, honestly. <laughs> but we did make a lot of, like, popular dishes, like, kare kare. It's like a peanut, um, like, base meal. Mm-hmm. Or it, it, it takes meat, but it's, like, cooked in, like, peanut butter. So, yeah, we, we, we did that. We, we did that. Nice. Um, what else did we do? Oh, we did a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, yeah. do you like to cook? Or um, I don't know how to cook um, traditional Filipino dishes, but I mean, give me a recipe book and then I, I can follow it. Can, okay. Yeah. But I, I do cook occasionally, just like chicken and rice. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, tell me about a dish that you made for the first time. For the first time. Oh shoot. <laughs> um for the first time it must have went well because i don't remember <laughs> i don't remember it too well mm-hmm. um let's see for the first time um i think probably the first dish i ever cooked was just like um some spam eggs and, and rice mm-hmm. um that's also like a traditional filipino thing um spam uh vienna sausage oh my god yes yes a lo- yeah very common um another filipino like breakfast item is like red hot dog oh <gasps> yeah yeah mm-hmm. those are really good um it's just like normal hot dog but it's red mm-hmm. uh yeah so that's like a, a common filipino breakfast so um i've cooked it before and oh it's really good yeah i yeah. I like eating, like, the red hot dogs, too. My mom likes to chop them up and put them in, like, a cabbage soup with, like, beef and carrots. Mm. Yeah. What, what is that called? Um, In Indo, it's called sop buntut. Sop buntut? Mm-hmm. Like, sop, uh, sop is soup, and then buntut is, like, beef tail. Oh, interesting. Okay, mm. yeah. Because we have a similar dish uh, like that where we also put, like, the red hot dog. It's called sopas. Mm. <laughs> sop. Sop. <laughs> I don't know what the us stands for, but yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. What's your uh, favorite high school memory? Favorite high school memory? Oh. Um, I think one of my favorite high school memories was when I asked my girlfriend to be my girlfriend. I think Aww. it was a really, really uh, nice and uh heartfelt moment for me mm-hmm. yeah um i guess <clears throat> a little bit about it so me and my girlfriend we've been together for four years and um it was our junior year of of high school and uh we were talking for for a little while and uh i knew i wanted to ask her to to be my girlfriend soon because i kind of we kind of like it's kind of obvious that we had feelings for each other and so I just wanted to do something really special for it. And um, prom, prom was coming up. So I was like, what if, like, I ask her to be my girlfriend in the form of, like, a, a promposal? Mm-hmm. And so I was like, all right, that's good. Now how should I do How should I do it? And me, being the Filipino that I am, um, I thought asking her out by uh, playing the ukulele mm-hmm. and seeing her a song would be <laughs> would be a really cute and, and uh, sweet idea. So uh, I got a bunch of, like, different friends to, like, help me prepare for it. Um, one of my friends is, like, really good at singing. His name's Adrian. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's, like, a, like a vocal coach. Uh, another friend, Angelo, he's also 
he also helped me with the singing and uh just like kind of like throwing a bunch of different ideas together and so yeah we we, we got all set up uh, we made a bunch of different posters and then we just did it and i was really nervous at school but i think what made the moment really special for me was um how like both of our like friends our really close friends were there and they were just like it's kind of just like a sweet moment everyone like like cheering us on when it happened and um well, it was just a really a really sweet moment to have those close to me those close to her there and yeah just, just a lot of love a lot of love mm-hmm. in the air oh yeah did the what, what song did i sing oh sunflower by uh rex orange county okay yeah so it's kind of our song now yeah 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 oh, that's so cute Thanks. <laughs> um, that like literally brings me into like the next topic because um, you met Angela in middle school. So I know that you touched on it a little bit, but can you give us like a brief timeline of your guys' relationship from middle school to now? Mm-hmm. Um, I do want to say, though, that I didn't say your name, but you just brought up Angela. <laughs> you brought up her name. Her name's Angela. <laughs> <laughs> her name is Angela. Um, can you repeat the question? <laughs> Um, how do you know her? How do you, how do you know? The, the people know that he's my friend. <laughs> oh, okay, it's not a secret. <laughs> okay, yeah, I've been friends with Felicia for a while. <laughs> Angelo's actually recording this podcast. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> Could you repeat the question? Sorry. <laughs> so your girlfriend's name's Angela. Yeah, she is An- her name is Angela. Mm-hmm. And you met her in middle school? I didn't meet her in middle school, yes. <laughs> Can you give us a brief timeline of your guys' relationship? Uh, sure, yeah. Um, so we met in um, we met in sixth grade. And I kind of want to, like, um, I kind of see her as, like, my first, like, real best friend. Um, I always felt like during elementary school you're friends with the people in your grade then you make new friends but Angela she was like the first person that I met and talked to um we shared like our first period science class together and so we kind of just like talked it out to each other and uh (laughs) fun fact fun fact she actually had a crush on me Mm -hmm. in in the in the sixth grade but um I think I was just like a pre pre prepubescent boy Mm. I don't know. I don't know what love was, or I didn't know like. I I I was very uh, immature. I didn't, I didn't know what to do in that situation. Cause, I see. Because, um, like I've had crushes, but I've never had someone who like liked me back. Mm-hmm. And so it was just like a lot of emotions at one time, <laughs> and um, yeah, I never gave her a proper response, um, and um, she told me she continued liking me, but then. Uh, she she didn't have feelings for me anymore, but we we were still like really close friends, um, seventh seventh or eighth grade, and even to high school like we um, were really close, and um, it wasn't until yeah probably till junior year that we started like really like talking again like rebuilding our friendship, mm-hmm. and uh, I don't know it was like it's so how should I say this. Like, I feel like with a big thing with relationships, it's, like, there's such, like, a, it's such a process, like, trying to meet someone new and then, like, going through that phase of, like, finding out about them, talking to them. And it's kind of, like, I guess, like, stressful. But for us, like, since we kind of knew each other, I don't know, things just kind of clicked. And so um, because of that, we got along well, started going on dates, and I don't know, I, I – never really clicked more with a person and you know kind of like dating your best friend is kind of like uh to some people it may be awkward because you just have like this like history of your friendship and then it's like ooh you know like you're just a friend like mm-hmm. getting friend zone um but yeah that didn't happen with us i think we we really were like a perfect match for each other i mm-hmm. think and so it was it was easy and yeah we're going four years strong oh yeah yeah so that's about it 
<coughs> now you guys had your four year anniversary recently too. We did. We did How have was our four that? year anniversary. Um it was also good too. Um I I had this I had this plan because we're both really into K pop mm-hmm. and I wanted to take her to the the Stray Kids concert, which is like <gasps> a Korean boy group. Yeah. And she's been really getting into it. And um it was, it was all set up. I had I was gonna I was gonna buy the tickets. I, I got some like K pop albums for her and the only thing that held me back was my mom. <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay. (laughs) And so that's another thing about Filipinos and Asian parents in general. They're very strict. And so um, she didn't want me uh, going there um, because she said so. Oh, okay. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And yeah, that was kind of, it was kind of bummy, but um, I still, still made it work. Um, We, we ended up um, having a nice photo shoot. I planned a photo shoot. Um, I wanted us to like get dressed really fancy, and uh, just like take really nice photos of each other mm-hmm. and together, and just kind of like have something to remember our four years. And then we also went out to eat. We went to what's it called? Uh, Texas de Brazil. Mm-hmm. It's like the the all you can eat meat. And yeah. Like, yeah, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> and so we had that, and then we uh, exchanged gifts. Um, I got us matching phone cases. <gasps> yeah, so this is uh, this. Oh, <laughs> this is uh, Mocha. That's his name. He's a he's a bear. He's like from a like a comic on Instagram. I don't know if you've seen it. Have you seen Mocha yeah. Mocha? Yeah. Yeah. So I got this, and she's got the the white bear. So is it Mocha and milk, right? Milk and Mocha. Milk and Mocha. Milk and Mocha. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. yeah. I mean, it should be Mocha and milk, right? I don't know. Like, Mocha, right? And then milk. Cause the I is first in the alphabet, so it makes sense. It's milk and mocha. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I guess. Um, off the off the record, <laughs> I was gonna make, make a really kind of sexist joke. How the the man is first. That's why it should be mocha and milk. <laughs> Off the record, we're not playing that on camera. <laughs> oh man! Next question. Next question. <laughs> um, Angela lives in California. She so, does live in California. Um, yes. Even though you two met here, uh, would you consider your relationship now long distance? Um, yeah, I would say it's long distance. Probably not as long distance as many, because like she like visits here often, and I visit here. Or I visit her often. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but it kind of, you know how, like, long-distance relationships can be, like, kind of difficult because, mm-hmm. like, um, you know, you, like, you really, like, need the person there. Like, when you're sad, you just need someone to hug and talk to. It's kind of, like, hard when it, it's long-distance. Um, it kind of, like, started, though. Like, we were kind of, like, training for it, training for long-distance since COVID started. Because COVID started in high school. And so, like, we couldn't really, like, see each other. So our relationship was long distance even then. Right. So when we made that transition, when she started going to Irvine, like, I stayed here. It was, like, we're kind of, like, adjusted to it. Mm, okay. So it's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever been in a long distance relationship? No. 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 Just a long distance situation ship, but, Ooh, yeah. Wow. Can we, can we dive more into that? Um, this podcast? Oh. Uh, I was just talking to a guy from California uh-huh. um, for a little bit, um, but it just didn't last long because he didn't want to make the effort to visit me here, um, but I would always visit him in mm-hmm. California, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, especially over the summer because we had a lot of free time, Yeah. Um, and then I wanted him to know my friends a little bit. So, right. So you uh, were committed to this relationship, but he wasn't committed um, to this? I mean, like, a little bit. It was um, more, I don't know, I, I think I was, like, more into it um, just because he was also, like, my first kiss, so. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so I brought him along to Universal Studios, which is uh, last summer, me and the friend group, Robbie, and everyone else in this room. I was also there. <laughs> <laughs> I also met the guy. <laughs> 
<laughs> Anyways, yes. Yeah. So and then he ghosted me. He ghosted you. Was he? Was he Vietnamese? Yeah. Vietnamese boys. Vietnamese don't date boys. a Vietnamese boys no. or Filipino boys. Yeah, don't just just don't date any men. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> um, in our friend group, I know that you and Angela's relationship is literally the standard. Um, it seems like there are rarely any problems, but if there are issues that arise in the relationship, how do you get over those? <laughs> you think our relationship's the standard? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Agreed. Camera crew. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. <laughs> um, but how do we like resolve our issues? Is that what you said? Mm-hmm. Uh, usually through just like a lot of yelling and shouting at each other and like just like stonewalling just like not talking to each other and then like a few days later it, we just act like it never happened <laughs> i'm joking i'm joking that doesn't it's not, it's not what happened wow you guys yeah you think we yell at each other i thought we're the perfect relationship <laughs> no one else is laughing no one else is laughing <laughs> you can laugh not a good joke Okay. <laughs> um, no, but um, we we do have fights. I mean, every actually, do we have fights? We don't have fights. Um, or at least we try not to like have fights. Um, I think one reason that we're like so compatible with each other is that we're really good like communicators. Mm. Um. Probably not at the start of our relationship because, like, everything, especially me because this is, like, my first relationship. Um, I had, like, a hard time communicating, um, c- communicating my feelings. But um, we kind of, like, learn to, like, adjust. And I can say now that, like, we're really good at communicating our feelings. So whenever, say, like, um, like we get jealous, right, um, we kind of just say it. Like, say, say how we feel. And then the other the other person be like we listen I mean like we listen to like their feelings make sure like they're heard and understood um, we try not to like blame each other or, like um, uh, there's this thing like try not to say any you statements we make a lot of I statements mm. so like I I feel I feel upset or I feel angry when this happens can we talk about it it's not like um, like you never talk to me or you're always hanging out with this girl mm. or um, you're always so selfish because when you say a bunch of you statements, it's very like antagonizing. You feel attacked. And so I feel like, you know, as a defense mechanism, you kind of like either one stonewall, don't say anything, or you also be aggressive and fight back. Right. But that's not effective. And to also be like, oh, you're like, um, you're being so weird or like you're so selfish with your emotions. That's also not good because it's how you feel. Like, if that's how you feel, then that's how you feel. You shouldn't tell another person how they should feel about a situation. Mm -hmm. So say um, if we were to feel, like, jealous, the other person – okay, say I felt jealous. Like, Angela, like, I'm going to be honest. Like, I feel really jealous when you um, hang out with this this guy. Um, Like, can we talk about it more? And then Angela's like, sure, sure. Like, yeah, let's talk about it. And then um, I, I talk more about, like, um, like, yeah, you guys are always hanging out with each other. And uh, I feel like we don't really get to hang out as often. And Angela would be like, okay, um, like, what are some things that we can do? And I was like, um, maybe we can, like, plan more more dates, more online dates. Maybe we can watch a movie together tonight. Or maybe we can, we can play games over the laptop. Mm-hmm. And Angela would be like, yeah, that sounds awesome. Let's do it. And um, usually with it, with that, she, like, gives me reassurance. Like, don't worry. Like, I love you a lot. Um, um, like, I, I, I'm sorry if, like, my actions, um, like, made you feel jealous. That's not something that I would want to do. Um, like, I love you very much. Kind of, like, mm-hmm. just, like, really, like, communicating our feelings, making sure that the other person's heard. And also providing that reassurance that everything's okay. Yeah. Um, I know something <clears throat> that happened in our relationship is uh, it's kind of similar because since I started nursing school last year, 
um, it was really difficult finding the time to um, hang out with Angela a lot. And um, she communicated that with me. She's like, I feel upset because we don't hang out as often. Mm-hmm. Or um, like, um, like, I wish that we had more time uh, for each other. Like, and she was like, can we do something about that? And honestly, that was really difficult just because like nursing school is really busy. Um, but still, like we found a way to make it work. And every Fridays we have date night. So um, that's something that we implemented. I also like made my I made a Google Calendar. Mm. Love Google Calendars. Yeah. Um, I feel like my 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 week is especially organized, more organized, but also at the same time, like we know each other's schedules. So, like, say we do have more time within the week to, like, talk to each other and hang out. We can. We can, mm-hmm. we can talk to each other. And yeah. so I think that's just especially a big part of, like, long-distance relationships and relationships in general, just being able to communicate with each other. Um, and, yeah, just, like, always try, always giving your 100% because relationships aren't 50-50. If, like, people expect that if you do something – that the other person needs to do something back. But, like, that's not the case. Like, each person should give, like, 100% um, of, like, their strength to, like, continue, like, the relationship, to show love. Like, don't do something because you expect love back from it, mm-hmm. right? Give that 100%, and um, things will be good. I think, it, like, I'm glad that you brought up the example of, like, how you're – conversation would go where she's yeah. like um she you or angela brings up the issue and then you guys come up with the solution mm-hmm. and then just like reassurance right yeah um i feel like oh, maybe <laughs> like for me um i think it's just like a me problem right. but whenever um like in the past someone that i would talk to would bring up something that like bothers them i would get defensive um, even if it's like, oh, I feel like jealous that you're hanging out with like a guy friend, I would be like, well, <laughs> that's like, your problem. <laughs> well, it's like not like that's like their problem, but it's it's just like, oh, I, you know, he's just a friend. This is this is this. Instead of me being like, oh, like propose a solution. Like I I hear I hear you out. Let's. Yeah, but I think that's just my personality that I need to work on. Where it's like I'm stubborn mm-hmm. and. Um, I think that I'm like right and it's just like mm-hmm. the other person's just overreacting or something like that. Yeah. Why do you think that is? I don't know. Do you think it's like a like a childhood thing? Um I don't know, maybe. Or like mm. maybe I just haven't found like the right person to like really communicate that with cuz I feel like if I wanted to genuinely spend more time with that person like Angela gave that solution was like oh or like um you and Angela would um be on the phone or like hang out with each other more mm, online and stuff night. yeah yeah like maybe if I genuinely wanted to do that with the person I'm talking to I would propose that solution mm-hmm. um but if I wasn't I'd be like well well that's <laughs> that <laughs> sucks that yeah. it happened that way I mm-hmm. see so like with your with your past relationship did you also feel that same way like were were there any problems like that or any arguments like any jealousy so things like that um definitely like my first one i feel like was a lot of um overprotectiveness um and jealousy that i at the time because i was 18 um wasn't really comfortable bringing up Mm because I just didn't like that confrontation. So I was really scared of him for a long time uh, because I felt like um, every little thing that I wanted to bring up with him, he would get really defensive over too. And then, so it's just like constant back and forth, which is like, I don't know where this is going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but recently I um, talked to him. Oh. Yeah. Really? (laughs) Yeah. How was that? Um, It was interesting. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. But after a couple of weeks, I told him I think it was best that we just don't have contact with each other anymore. Mm-hmm. Even though that I was the one that hit him up, I just felt like 
I can't keep bringing him keep, in yeah. this chapter of my life. Mm-hmm. Like he, I don't know. Obviously, like when I was 18, I was a different person than I am now. Right. So it's just like really different. Um, I don't know. Yeah, you liked him then, but then like so many years passed that like you guys are both kind of like in your own lives on your own trajectory. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How come? Yeah. How come you reached out to him? Um, I just wanted to like have that feeling that he was doing okay because I honestly like you know didn't know what he was up to. Right, so, yeah. um, I'm glad that that he's doing that is, like great. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's just like okay, like I can be at peace, mm-hmm. and I kind of like I was looking for closure for a long time, especially like for two years, um. Cause he kind of like goes with me too. <laughs> so, um, was he Filipino? Yeah. <laughs> He's Filipino. Filipino boys. Don't date him. <laughs> nope. Um, yeah. So for a long time, I really wanted that closure, but then like, it wasn't until now that I realized that that was the closure that I needed. Like him just like leaving without saying anything like that is enough closure for me that he like didn't take the time to explain like why he left. Um, so yeah, but I don't know. It was just it was a really emotional conversation because. Wait, recently, is, or back then? Oh, like recently. Recently. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Cause, um, it was just me, like, crying because, um, I still cared for him, but I feel like I just can't keep dragging him to like how uh, my life now. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's good. And um, how did he respond to you when, like, you kind of like told told how you felt about like the whole situation? Um, at first he didn't really understand it because <laughs> he was like, I mean, like I can be like you know a part of your life now, or it's like Ooh. we were both different people, so I mm-hmm. feel like it's like a fresh start. But I told him I was like, no, like I feel like I just can't. Like I feel like I have to let you go. And right. I was just like, yeah. But he's a really like, a, let's see, what's the word? Like, um, he's really good with his words. <laughs> so he almost convinced me like two times. I'd be like, yeah, okay. maybe, what if we do get back and together? I'm like, okay, <laughs> but no, I. No, that that's 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 really awesome. I feel like, um, just be able, just being able to like con- confront him again after like so much time has passed and like, explain your side, of how you felt, and also just saying. Just like taking that step into like, um, not talking anymore, like you know that's that's a, that's a really a hard thing to do because because like you do care about him, you may not like love him like you used to, but like there's still that part of you that cares about him. So, just being able to like, like step away from that and really like just focus like on yourself and not about him. Mm-hmm. So it's a good step. So. That's awesome. Good yeah. job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, I was like, oh, man, I'm not going to tell Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you told me. Yeah. yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. What question am I at? Ah. Uh, so the other day, um, I was at Shanghai Plaza, and then we were just, like, browsing. And one of the owners of, like, this, like, street apparel shop or whatever yeah um he was giving us like relationship advice for some reason because it was me you i was there too (laughs) and and nicholas Uh um and then he said that it was like better to go for someone who is not in the same career field as you Um, what are your thoughts on that uh hmm i feel like everyone like looks at like relationships is differently like you ask one couple for advice i mean you, you'd find like advice that matches up but um especially the advice he gives um look for someone that's in a different career field um i see that working um i'm a nursing and angela's in biomedical engineering so i guess it's kind of different but it's still like healthcare STEM. related mm-hmm. yeah stem related um but other than that, I feel like we have like a lot of similarities. Like we like, um, we like K-pop. We have a similar friend group. <laughs> um, let's see what else. We're both Filipino, so yeah, we we do have a lot of similarities. Um, I think um, 
you you can follow that advice because for a lot of people, they like um sp- like spice spice in their relationship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> they like uh they like something new. So they want to find people that's like the opposite of them. Mm-hmm. So yeah, different career fields. Say if you're like a nurse, maybe dating someone that's like a maybe like an athlete. I guess right. It's right. A very different career field. Um, and so just, um, it could work finding someone that's like the opposite career field as you, but honestly, at the end of the day, for me, it's just the communication aspect because, uh, I, I believe that you can like make any, um, relationship work. Um, not, but if they're like, like abusive, then probably doesn't work probably yeah. want to get out of that relationship <laughs> but if it's um if there's like if a, if there's a problem with the relationship it's not because we're too similar mm-hmm. no one ever says no one ever says that um when, whenever like people like break up it's probably because maybe like cheating or maybe <laughs> i was gonna say maybe they're just bored but like boredom that's another thing that you can fix too i mean probably go out on more dates like explore like different explore like different interests together like if um if like if there's like a new restaurant that opened um somewhere on shanghai plaza like go experience that together i think um this is also a weird word but trauma i feel like trauma like brings a lot of people together like if they experience shared trauma, um, like for me and in nursing, I have, I've made like a bunch of new friends now just cause like we're going through that shared experience of like nursing school. Mm-hmm. And so in a relationship, you can kind of apply that by, um, doing like new things together, like creating new memories. Um, and it goes back to me saying, putting a hundred percent into the relationship because if you want to make it work, you'll plan out like different date ideas that you guys can do together. You'll plan out um, time to like try out like new restaurants or watch new movies or just like do different activities together. Mm-hmm. And I think for me, that's spice. <laughs> that is spicing out the relationship. Just finding different things that you can do with your partner and um, just creating new memories. But um, so back to the advice you can do that find someone from a different career field um it that's good spice to introduce you to the relationship and get you talking to that person but after that um you want to find new ways to continue that relationship Mm -hmm. if that makes sense yeah Yeah. what do you feel about the advice do you kind of agree with it um i think i can see both sides where it's like for medical um at first i wanted to go for someone that would that I find in like medical school Mm -hmm. because I feel like you know that shared trauma or like um because both of us are going to be um busy uh if I was dating someone in medical school we'd understand each other's busy schedule right like oh yeah like we can't hang out often because you know we're studying for that same exam or like Mm -hmm. whatever um but also makes sense to find someone that's in a different field because you know to keep it more interesting or like conversations like going because mm-hmm. uh, i feel like if it's like the same field it's kind of just like every day is the same <laughs> um, you ask them how their day is mm-hmm. but you know how their day yeah, is it's like oh yeah we like, you know class or like <laughs> exam like we just we just did the same thing i don't yeah. know well, stop mm-hmm. talking to me <laughs> yeah so i don't know i guess it depends it depends yeah mm-hmm. um i like how you mentioned like finding someone like that's also in medical school because i feel like that's like a similar reason why like people in high school like people with high school relationships that they break up after high school because you're always together like during high school you have the same classes or you're always spending time but once you leave high school maybe someone like goes long distance like relationships just end up failing right so just like yeah having having sharing an occupation like can be helpful because that way you're always like um like next to the person you can relate to the person but yeah Honestly, the more we talk about it, I don't think it's a good advice. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. Yeah. yeah. Um. 
you could date someone from the opposite occupation. Um, but um, if you're dating, if you're a nurse dating a nurse, like, don't stress about it. It's fine. You don't need to find someone completely different from you. It's good to have similarities. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you're dating someone in medical school, you just have to worry about them, like, losing their hair when they're, like, 25 or something. But Getting gray hairs. Yeah, that's pretty mm-hmm. much it. But at least you and your partner will be making, like, six figures. Six figures, double. Yeah. <sighs> double the income. Double income. Go travel the world. Mm-hmm. Spice it up. Yeah. I, yeah. There you go. Spice it up with money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, speaking of career, you're almost done with nursing school. So yes. how does it feel? Oh, oh, it's kind of scary. I do not. I tell everyone this. I do not feel like a nurse. Oh. But you tell that to a nurse, they're also going to say, yeah, you're going to feel that way. Mm-hmm. Like probably while you are a nurse working, mm-hmm. um, which is kind of scary knowing that your nurse doesn't feel like prepared to be a nurse. Um, I don't know whose fault that is. I feel like just it's a lot of everything. Um, I definitely didn't expect nursing to be like this. Nurses just have like so much responsibility, and um, that's why we we have a nursing shortage because we always like feel burnt out. Um, patients complain, family members complain, doctors complain, and it's mm-hmm. all it's all your fault. Oh, and um, nursing school our nursing school is only one and a half years, so mm-hmm. it's not that much time. Like med school is like four years plus like residency. And us, like, we're, we're working by December, so they're kind of just, like, throwing us in. Right. Throwing us in the hellfire. And so <laughs> I'm not I'm not ready. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, everyone I talk to don't, doesn't feel ready. Um, it's scary. Uh, yeah. No hope mm-hmm. there. <laughs> oh, my God. But I do, um, you know, with, 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 um, with experience, um, you learn a lot. Mm-hmm. And uh, my brother's a nurse. Um, he's the only one in my family that's a nurse. And I know when he first started working that he also felt that way. Like, damn, he hates his job. Like, okay. Like, it's just it's just way too stressful. But now it's like he's learned a lot. And now he's making that bank. And nice. now he's pretty happy. Mm-hmm. But stress at the same time. But it's, it gets better. And so that kind of gives me hope that I can, like, make it through this journey and then hopefully make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> You don't want to see my bank account. Oh my god! <laughs> you see my bank account. Well, I, I'm broke. Maybe like a few months ago. A few months ago. Yeah. What does it look like now? It was a few months ago. <laughs> it was when we saw that guy at Shanghai Plaza. We were outside oh, yeah. of the mm-hmm. the what's it called? The Crunchies. Mm-hmm. Really good, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's still. <laughs> I need money. I need money. Yeah. Yeah. Me so. too. You don't need money. I yeah, saw you. I, I saw your bank account. But I need money. For what? I spent so much at the 626 Foodie Land like night market thingy. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah. But I mean, that's worth it. 80 bucks? Yeah. With the memories? Who'd you go with? Oh, my sorority sisters. Oh, okay. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. money well spent. And you're also working right now too, right? Yeah. Well, only two days a week, but once summer starts, I'm going to... Work more. Work more. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, how are you, how's that? Because you're you're also like obviously pre med. Um. I was balancing work and. Uh, it's yeah. okay. It's okay. Yeah. Um. I'm just getting by. Mhm. Getting by. Mhm. Are you you're making that bank though? Not really. I feel <laughs> like with Starbucks, like I had um, a lot of money coming in, uh-huh. and now with this job, it's a lot of money coming out. Ooh. Yeah. Well, I saw your bank account. You'll be fine till the summer. Okay, thank you. Unless you start spending weird stuff, but you're, we'll you're not. See. You're not a spender. You're not like a chronic spender. Um, it's just mostly like food. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's where a lot of my money went. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um. Yeah. So, and then I know that you told me a while ago that nursing may not be like the field you wanted to go into, but that was like the start of. Is my Nursing mom gonna see school. this? Huh? Is my mom gonna see this podcast? Hopefully not. Anyways, continue. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you still feel that way, or was it just like a moment of weakness? Moment of weakness. Uh, a, uh, a brief lapse in judgment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, what did I say? 
that I didn't think nursing school was for me? Um, what was it? I think you were just like not having the best time. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, I still feel that way. (laughs) Um, well not really. Um, because I feel like, you know, with nursing, there's a lot of things you can do with your job. Um, something that I've come to find out that like, I'm pretty passionate in is like teaching people and like, um, uh, I feel like I'm an I'm an introvert, right? Mm-hmm. Like I need to recharge my social battery, but uh, I find it really easy to talk to people, especially in my community class. For for our community class, we had to do like a bunch of tabling, so we're mm-hmm. we're, we're here at UNLV just teaching people about the resources here we have on campus. Oh, nice! And I find myself like being like really engaged and like just talking to people, and meeting people. So I feel like um, it's something that I can see myself doing. Um, so being like a, a nurse educator or someone that teaches here at UNLV about nursing. Mm-hmm. I definitely see that in my uh, in my career field, right? Um, but at the, at the end of the day, um, like why I'm here in nursing is because of, I know it's kind of bad because do what you like for yourself. But I feel like me, I'm a, I'm a very giving person. I like just want to be there. For people especially like my family and angela um because you know with whatever like angela wants to do with her career i want to be able to support her and something that i can do with that is like work as a nurse right and like help like pay for her school or like pay for like any further education that she wants to proceed in mm-hmm. so that's something that like makes me want to be a nurse um i also want to be a nurse because um i don't want my parents to work anymore Mm. Um, like my mom she's like sometimes working like six seven days a week and it, it's like really sad because like you also see them like getting old right right um oh, that's another thing i get really sad seeing how much my parents age um but yeah i don't want them to work as much like i want to they've done like so much for me growing up and i just want to like be able to like give that back to them and um i'm sure my brother feels the same way that's why he's in nursing and so just being able to do that, at least for the meantime, is like my current goal. And then say like once Angela starts working and um, I've saved up enough money, then I can go back to like doing more school. Mm-hmm. Um, I think to be like a nurse educator is just like one more year um, in school to be able to like teach nursing. And um, oh, there's all like, there's like, yeah, there's, there's literally so much stuff you can do as a, as a nurse as a registered nurse so many different avenues probably won't pay as much as bedside nursing but once i go back to school that's something something i can think about yeah yeah that's a good plan i like that plan Mm -hmm. yeah would i have picked a different major if i'd known this is what nursing was like um that's um i don't know I, i don't know um people say live your life with no regrets but I wonder if I had chose a different major, would would where I am in five years or ten years be different? Mm-hmm. Like, I can't say, but right. those are my current goals right now, and now I'm just gonna keep pushing with it. Yeah, I mean, you're doing a great job. So <laughs> thanks. I think just like one more semester, and then start working, and then save up, and then if you're just like not feeling it, then at least you have like you know money on the side to pursue another kind of passion another career yeah yeah for sure um we just had like a little round table discussion with like um nurses in the field and they said something kind of interesting how um of the people in the room 95 percent of us will probably be um in some other form of nursing like we're not going to be bedside Mm. nurses Mm -hmm. i think that's kind of crazy to think because like I feel like there's like so many nurses and there's like like 72 new students in each cohort each semester, right? Right. And so like in 5 years time only 5% of of them stay as bedside nurses, where do the rest of them go? Mm-hmm. And so I think it's very telling that like my future is still like undecided. Like I'm not like going to be a nurse forever. I like I still have like a lot of control and power over what I do. So like um like, I'm okay with where I am now. Mm-hmm. And I think whatever does happen will be good. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. 
Yeah, thanks. <laughs> All right. Well, that wraps up the first episode of Bull Cut. Uh, how do you feel? Uh, <laughs> I feel all right. I hopefully the audience likes this. Um, I'm very, I was very nervous walking into it, but I think um, you're such an excellent host, really. <laughs> no, well, I mean, you make me feel comfortable. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's a pleasure, Robbie. Thank you for joining us today, um, and thank you to whoever's listening. Um, there will be more episodes uh, from me, and if you want Robbie to come back, just let us know, and uh, we'll interrogate him next time. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you again, and uh, have a great day. See you guys.